Patterson Library friends, this is Miss Amy from Patterson Library. Today, our Patterson Library staff are going to be the special event. We're really happy that you can join us at the beginning of week three of our summer reading program, Imagine Your Story. Today, we're going to take a little bit of a twist. We're going to read a traditional fairy tale that you probably all know. I'm going to share with you the traditional story of Cinderella. The story of Cinderella first started in China hundreds and hundreds of years ago. It's been told in countries around the world. So after I read the traditional story, I'm going to share a book called Glass Slipper Gold Sandal. And it will show you how in different countries the story is told different ways. It's a very cool book and I think you're going to want to check this one out and look at it more closely one day. When I'm done, we're going to um, do a little science experiment with Miss Emily, and then Miss Emily and Miss Jamie will also read stories, but they're going to read some fractured fairy tales. You might know what a fractured fairy tale is. It's where you take a traditional story like Cinderella and you sort of twist it up. You might have the characters be a little different. You might have something in the plot change, or the point of view might be different and usually they make us laugh. The idea of a fractured fairy tale is to make it kind of silly. At the library, we happen to have a lot of Cinderella stories and fractured fairy tales. This one is a more traditional, as is this one, retold by Marcia Brown. And then we have some crazy fractured fairy tales that you might want to check out. Cinderella Skeleton, the Egyptian Cinderella, this one I especially like because I have a dog that is half Weimarimer, and William Wegman has done a Cinderella book featuring his dogs as the characters. And the last one, other than the ones you're going to hear us read today, is called Cinders, a chicken Cinderella story. So get ready for some fun, and I hope you enjoy these stories and crafts and science experiments today. I'm going to start with a traditional Cinderella story. This one is retold by Barbara McClintock. Once upon a time, a nobleman lived happily with his sweet and gentle-natured wife and their daughter. And when his wife died, he took another wife who seemed as sweet and gentle as the first. But no sooner was the wedding over than the new wife revealed herself to be the mean and jealous person she truly was. She couldn't stand the way her new stepdaughter's pleasing demeanor made her own daughters look silly and selfish. That is why she gave her stepdaughter only rags to wear and made her do all the worst chores around the house. The poor girl swept all the floors, washed and dried and pressed the laundry, scrubbed the stairs and cleaned and scoured every dish, pot and pan. And at night, she slept on a thin mattress in the dingy attic while her stepsisters had a lavish bedroom and all the luxuries they wanted. Her stepmother ruled her father with an iron fist, and the poor girl knew he would only scold her if she complained. So she suffered in patient silence. After a long day when her chores were done, the girl sat by the cinders near the fireplace to keep warm, which is why she was called Cinderella. But the older stepsister, who was the meaner of the two, called her Cinder Bottom. Despite everything, Cinderella in her rags was still a thousand times more beautiful and dear than her spoiled stepsisters. One evening, the girls were invited to a grand ball that was given by the king's son. The stepsisters were all flutter about what to wear and how to arrange their hair. And what will you wear, Cinderella, they teased. Cinderella sighed. I'm not going, she said, examining her tattered clothing, but she wished to go to the ball with all her heart. The stepsisters asked Cinderella to help them dress and put up their hair because she could make whatever she arranged look beautiful, but they couldn't resist taunting her. Can't you imagine Cinderella and Cinderbottom at the ball, asked the elder. Oh, they'd have to follow her around with a dustpan while holding their noses, said the younger one. Both squeaked with laughter. Cinderella resisted an urge to yank their hair. Instead, she patiently made them look as pleasing as possible. The time came to go to the ball. Cinderella watched as her stepsisters entered their carriage and drove away. Once they were out of sight, she began to cry. Suddenly, a 
kind stranger appeared and asked what the matter was. I, I wish Cinderella was crying too hard to talk. But this kindly woman who was really her fairy godmother said, I know, you wish you could go to the ball. Oh yes, said Cinderella. Well then, said the godmother, let's get busy. We'll start with this pumpkin. Now bring me four mice, a rat, and four lizards. This did seem a bit odd to Cinderella, but she found four mouse, mice and a rat in a trap and four lizards behind the garden pot. The godmother raised her arms and said these magic words. Fumus balumus! And in a flash, the pumpkin grew into a golden carriage. The four mice changed into four handsome gray horses. The lizards became, became four livery men dressed in shining green emerald, and the rat turned into a portly coachman with a jaunty mustache. Cinderella was amazed. Now one more thing, said the godmother with a smile. All at once, Cinderella's tattered rags vanished and the most beautiful dress imaginable appeared in their place. A pair of tiny glass slippers graced her feet. My dear, her grandmother said, you must be home before midnight because at the stroke of 12, everything will turn back into what it was. Don't forget. Cinderella thanked her godmother, stepped into her coach and rode away. When the prince heard that an unknown princess had arrived, he rushed to greet her. He gave Cinderella his arm and together they walked into the ball. All eyes were on the charming stranger. The lady studied her so that they could copy her hair and dress the next day. Even the king and queen admired her beauty. The prince asked her to dance. Her astounding grace amazed everyone. By the time dinner was served, the prince was so smitten that he couldn't eat a bite. He gave Cinderella a plate of oranges as a gift. She brought them to her stepsisters and served them with kindness. They were dumbstruck that this unknown beauty would pay any attention to them at all. Suddenly, Cinderella saw it was a quarter to 12. She curtsied and she quickly left. When she got home, Cinderella told her godmother all about the ball and how much she wished to go again the next night. And then she heard her stepsisters at the door. Oh, you were gone so long, she yawned, pretending she'd been sleeping. Oh, the most beautiful princess came to the ball, said the younger sister. And she gave us her oranges, said the elder. Oh, I'd love to see her, said Cinderella. Won't one of you lend me an old dress so that I can go tomorrow? What a joke, both stepsisters laughed. Lend a dress to a filthy cinder bottom? Ha! Cinderella smiled a secret smile. The next night, the two stepsisters entered the hall, followed by Cinderella, who was dressed even more beautifully than she'd been the night before. The moment she arrived, the prince was at her side. They danced all night, chatting with the ease of old close friends. The time passed so quickly and so sweetly. Suddenly, Cinderella heard the clock striking 12. She ran as fast as a startled deer. She bounded down the stairs and one glass slipper fell from her feet. Outside the palace stood a pumpkin. From beneath it, four mice, four lizards, and a rat scurried away. Cinderella's elegant dress turned back to rags. The prince ran after her, but all he found was her little sparkling shoe on the stairs. He held it close for the rest of the night, thinking only of the mysterious princess who had run away with his heart. The next morning, the stepsisters were beside themselves with excitement. The prince had made a proclamation that he would marry the girl who fit the glass slipper. His valet would go to every house to try the slipper on the foot of each young lady in the kingdom. Just think, the older sister said, what if the slipper fits me? Or me, wondered the younger one. Soon the prince's valet appeared at the door, holding the little glass slipper on a cushion. First, the elder stepsister tried on the slipper, but without success. Then the younger stepsister tried, also with no luck. May I try, whispered Cinderella. You, sneered the stepsisters. What a silly idea. But to everyone's great astonishment, the slipper fit, fit Cinderella's foot perfectly. When Cinderella pulled the matching slipper from her pocket, the younger stepsister fainted. The prince was overcome with joy. Within a few days, a great wedding took place. Cinderella and the prince were married. Her father gave her to the groom with great pride, and Cinderella, in her kindness, forgave her stepmother and found each of her stepsisters a suitable nobleman to wed. They were all terribly sorry about how they had treated her, and everyone lived happily ever after, forever and a day. Now I'm gonna show you parts 
of the book that I mentioned earlier, Glass Slipper, Gold Sandal, a worldwide Cinderella. Now this is a Newbery Award winning author, Paul Fleshman, who put this book together. And it's illustrated by Julie Petschkus, and the illustrations are wonderful. Now, as I told you, there are Cinderella stories all over the world, and the end pages show all the different countries where we're going to hear parts of the story from. Appalachia in the United States, Mexico, Ireland, Russia, India, China, Indonesia, Zimbabwe, all over the earth. The Cinderella story changes, but it always tells us a lesson about kindness and being good to one another and what happens when you're not. Once upon a time, there lived a wealthy merchant whose wife had died. They had one daughter, gentle-eyed and good-hearted. Now this part comes from Mexico. Down the road lived a widow with two daughters. The woman gave the girl treats when she passed, pan dulce to eat, sugar cane to chew. The girl knew her father was lonely. You should marry this lady, she told him. She's nice to me. Father had his doubts, but the girl kept asking, and how long can a father say no to his daughter? And so he and the widow were married. So in this version, Cinderella encourages her father to marry this nice lady who gave her sweets. And from Korea, this part of the story, but no sooner had the stepmother moved in than she began to order the girl about. All day long, she set her to weeding the rice fields and cooking and carrying. The woman gave the girls room to her lazy daughters and at night the girl had nowhere else to sleep, but curled for warmth among the ashes on the hearth. And from Iraq, this part, her stepmother allowed only a few scraps of food. Her stomach howled, and then the girl recalled how she begged her father to marry. I picked up the scorpion in my own hand, she told herself, and she vowed not to complain to her father and upset him. Now I'm gonna skip a few pages, because you know that she has to work hard and the sisters are very cruel. And then this part from Zimbabwe, and you see the pictures are very different from all the countries too. One day it was announced far and wide that the great king was in search of a queen. All the unmarried women dressed in their finest robes and set off for the palace. From Germany, to make sure the girl couldn't go, the stepmother threw an apron full of lentils into the ashes and ordered her to pick them out. From Appalachia, and scour all the chicken pot Kitchen pots too, she hollered. From Germany, as soon as the stepmother left with her daughters, the girl burst into tears. Outside, the sparrows heard her, and in they flew and pecked the lentils from the ashes. And from Appalachia, then a witch woman came in and spoke a spell, and up jumped the pots and scoured themselves. So I'm gonna skip a couple other pages, but from Japan, the girl found a kimono red as sunset. And then, wait a minute, it doesn't talk about a fairy godmother in these. A crocodile swam up to the surface and in its mouth, mouth was a sarong made of gold. Huh. And from France, on the girl's feet a pair, appeared a pair of gold glass slippers. From India, she got diamond anklets. And from Iraq, she got sandals of gold. Walk to the ball, said the girl's auntie. From West Indies, never. She picked a big round breadfruit from a tree, tapped it three times with her wand, and quick as a blink of a firefly, that breadfruit changed itself into a coach. We'll skip ahead a little bit. The girl danced with the headman's son until the first rooster crowed, and then she remembered she had to leave at once. From China, the king declared he would marry the golden shoes owner. He ordered the women of the court to try it on, but none could squeeze inside, so he went searching for its owner up and down the mountains. From Iraq, across the deserts, and from Laos, until he came to the stepmother's house. When she saw him approach, she grabbed her stepdaughter, wrapped her in a mat, and hid her. And from France, I'm certain this shoe will fit one of my fine favored girls, said the woman. Grunting and sweating, her older daughter tried to wrestle the shoe on, but couldn't. Neither could the younger. And again from Iraq, just then, the rooster began to crow. 
They put the ugly one on show and hid the beauty down below. The girl was brought forward. Don't waste your time with that one. But the magistrate looked into the girl's eyes, took the straw sandal in his hand, and slipped it onto her foot with ease. She and the great king were married in the palace where the guests feasted on mangoes and melons, and from India, rice seasoned with almonds, and from Ireland, beef stew and lamb stew, and from Mexico, anise cookies and custards, and from Iraq, such a wedding it was, and such an adoring couple from Korea, and such a wondrous turn of events that people today all over the world are still telling the story. Now we're gonna go out to the other room where Miss Emily has an activity planned to show you, and then we'll come back in to hear another story. Hi everybody, now that we've heard those wonderful stories from Miss Amy, we're going to do a craft slash science activity. So we're gonna make Cinderella's coach because it turns out the fairy godmother tried to turn the pumpkins and mice into a coach, but she made them disappear. So we have to make a coach to get Cinderella to the ball. We're gonna do that using wind energy. Now wind energy is the process of creating electricity just using the wind. Some people like it because it's renewable, it's clean, it's efficient, and today we're going to use it, like I said, to get Cinderella to the ball. So your mission is to take anything you have at home and create a coach. Now don't worry, I'll help you through the process. So I tried to use, do it using simple materials so that you might have these things at home. I have paper plates, I have a piece of paper, some markers and straws and tape, that's about it. And scissors, and if you're a little younger, maybe ask your parents for help because we don't want anyone getting hurt. So first thing I did was take my paper, sort of cut it into a long and skinny piece and I folded it into a square. Then, super easy, just took some pieces of tape. And look at that, we're already part way there. I have the coach part done. And now, we need to make it move. This itself can't move very well, but what do we need? What helps things move? Wheels. So. I used a paper plate and I cut out little circles, you can see them right here, and I poked holes in them. This is where you might need help from mom or dad or anyone you have at home. After that, just have my four wheels, put it on the straw, and just like that, we have something that's rolling. That's a good step, but now we need to attach it to this. So I took little pieces of paper and we're going to create something little almost U-shapes and tape them down so that the wheels have somewhere to go. So I take my tape, put down the first one, and there's no right way to do this. You can do this any way you want. This is just one example, and we'd love for you to get creative with it. So then I take my second, and I'm gonna do that for all four wheels so that they're all secured. Now just for time purposes, I do have one ready. Got my little pumpkin carriage, coach. And your goal is to make it go at least five feet in 10 seconds using as much wind energy, in this case, breaths as possible. So ready? Uh-oh. That, if it's not working, you need to make some adjustments. Check your wheels, see how it's working. And as you can see, sort of decorated it to look like a pumpkin, but you can make it look like anything you want. We really encourage you to try different designs, different materials. You could go for speed, distance, anything you want. But this was creating Cinderella's coach. Now we're going to, going to go to Miss Jamie for a story. Thanks, guys. Hi, everybody. So today
today I'm going to be re reading Cinder Edna. I know. New story, huh? Once upon a time, there were two girls who lived next door to each other. You may have heard the first one. Her name was Cinderella. Poor Cinderella was forced to work from morning till night, cooking and cleaning pots and pans, picking up after her cruel stepmother and wicked stepsisters. When her work was done, she sat among the cinders to keep warm, thinking all about her troubles. Well, Cinder Edna, the other girl who was also forced to work for her wicked stepmother and stepsisters, but she sang and whistled while she worked. Moreover, she learned a thing or two about doing all that housework such as how to make tuna casserole 16 different ways and how to get spots off everything from rugs to ladybugs. Edna tried sitting in the cinders a few times, but she didn't like it. It just made her clothes black and sooty. Instead, the help, when the housework was done, she kept warm by mowing the lawn, cleaning parrot cages for the neighbors at $1.50 an hour. She also taught herself to play the accordion. Even with her ragged, sooty clothing, Cinderella was quite beautiful. Edna, on the other hand, she was strong and spunky and knew some good jokes, including an especially funny one about an anteater from Afghanistan. Now one day, the king announced that there would be a ball and Cinderella's stepsisters were quite excited and Cinder Edna's stepsisters were excited too. On the evening of the ball, they trimmed their toenails and fostered feet. They put their most beautiful gowns on and drove away, leaving Edna behind to clean up after them. Cinderella was sitting among the cinders and sighed. Oh, I wish I had a godmother who could change these rags into beautiful gowns so that I could too go to the ball. No sooner did she say that, and guess who showed up? Her godmother. And with the wave of her magic wand, she changed Cinderella's rags into a beautiful gown. On Cinderella's incredibly tiny feet appeared a pair of dainty glass sip slippers. Cinder Edna didn't believe in fairy godmothers. Instead, she used her cage cleaning money to put a dress on layaway and for just these kinds of occasions. And my comfortable loafers will be perfect for dancing, she said as she slipped them on her feet. Meanwhile, Cinderella, big bright eyes beamed with tears. But fairy godmother, how will I get to the ball? The fairy godmother was surprised that her goddaughter couldn't seem to figure out how to get herself anywhere. However, with another wave of her wand, she changed a pumpkin to a carriage, six white mice into horses, and a stray rat into a coachman. Be, be sure to leave before midnight, she warned. Cinderella had helped her into the elegant, Cinderella as she helped her into the elegant carriage. Cinder Edna, however, took the bus. When Cinderella arrived at the ball, everyone thought she was a princess. Randolph, which was the king's son, was taken by her great beauty. He asked her to dance, but Cinderella could only sway a bit to the music because she was afraid of messing up her hair and she knew those fragile glass slippers might break. Just in case, Cinder Ed just then, Cinder Edna entered the room. She made straight for the refreshment table and poured herself some punch. It was Randolph's princely duty to greet everyone who came in to say, so he would say hello. What's it like being a prince? Edna asked to make conversation. He said, quite fantastic. Mostly, I review the troops and sit around on the throne looking brave and wise. He turned his head so Edna could see his handsome chin look from the right side. Boring, thought Edna. Excuse me, we recycle plastic around here, said the little man with glasses and a warm smile. Just ignore him, said Randolph. He's my younger brother, Rupert. 
He lives in a cottage in the back and runs the recycling plant and a home for orphaned kittens. Cinder Edna immediately gave Rupert her cup. Would you like to dance, said Rupert. Cinder Edna and Rupert danced and danced. They did the storybook swamp and the cinnamon twist. They did the worm and the fish. They boogied and woogied, and at last they stopped for a round of punch. Edna learned that Rupert loved tuna casserole, played an instrument, and knew some good jokes. She told him about the one about the anteater in Afghanistan, and he told her one about a banana from Barbados. They were deep in conversation about gum wrappers and rusty tin cans when the clock began to strike 12. <gasps> oh, cried Cinderella, rang for the door. The magic spell disappears at midnight. <gasps> oh, oh, said Cinder, and they're running for the door. The buses stop at midnight. Randolph and Rupert ran after the two girls. Wait, wait, they called, but it was too late and the girls vanished into the night. The two princes ran smack dab into each other on the palace steps. <gasps> Whap! They landed with a thud. Rupert's glasses went flying and broke into a million pieces on the cement. Look what you made me do, said Randolph. Gee, now that she's gone, the only girl I ever loved, well, didn't you get her name, said Rupert? Uh, gee, I forgot to ask, said Randolph, scratching his head. As Rupert got up, he stumbled over something. When he leaned close to look, he saw two shoes lying side by side on the steps. One was a scuffed up loafer, and the other was a dainty glass slipper. These definitely should be recycled, he said. <gasps> no, no, said Randolph. This is how we're going to find them. We're going to go around and have everybody try on these shoes. And whoever fits in these shoes is going to be the princesses. Rupert looked at his brother in disbelief. That is positively amazing, he said. You're the most amazing, dumb idea I've ever heard. You could end up married to a midget. I have a much better idea. But Randolph wouldn't listen. He ran to his room to get his beauty sleep. Next day, he put his plan into action. He went to every house in the kingdom, trying to cram women's feet into the glass slipper. Rupert, however, he put his plan into action, and he looked up all the Ednas in the palace directory. And when he visited them, he asked each one this question. How many recipes do you know for tuna casserole? Randolph soon became discouraged. All the feet he saw were either too large or too wide, too long, or adorned with electric pink toenail polish. Rupert too was discouraged. While some MS could name tuna casseroles with peanut sauce and sour cream and rice, there was only <clears throat> Sorry. Finally, Rupert got to Cinderella's house. Randolph got to Cinderella's house. The cruel stepsisters were eager to try on the glass sipper, but of course, it did not fit either of them. But son, suddenly, Randolph noted a woman in rags sitting, uh, looking into the cinders in the corner. Something about her seemed familiar. Oh, miss, why don't you try this on, he suggested. Oh, and Cinderella tried it on, and guess what? It fit perfectly. Randolph swept her into his arms and carried her away to the palace so that they could be married. Meanwhile, Rupert reached Cinder Edna's house. And when he got to the house, at that moment, Cinder Edna came in from mowing the lawn. Her heart almost stopped when she saw Rupert. He blinked nearsightedly at her. Without his glasses, Cinder Edna looked something like a large plate of mashed potatoes. Are you, let's see, Ashes Edna? And then he thought about it, looking down at his notes, and he said, wait, I already talked to her. And she said, no, I'm Cinder Edna, she said. Well, can you name 16 ways of making tuna casserole?
Of course, she said, and she began to name off. She rattled 15 different kinds, including tuna casserole with pickled pig's feet. And then she stopped. And that was her last one anyway. Only 15, Rupert said, turning to go. Well, maybe I can't name 16 of tuna casserole recipes, but I do have a great joke about a kangaroo from Kalamazoo. Rupert stopped in his tracks. My love, he said. He gave her a tiny kiss. Will you marry me? Soon after that, Randolph and Rupert married Ella and Edna, and they were married in the grand double ceremony in the palace. So the girl who had once been known as Cinderella ended up in the big palace during the day. She listened to endless ceremonies and listened to dozens of speeches. And at night she listened to her husband's per um, with nothing to do but watch her husband's perfect profile while he endlessly talked of troops, parade formations, and uniform buttons. And the girl who had been known as Cinder Edna ended up in a small cottage with solar heating. During the day, she studied waste disposal engineering and cared for orphaned kittens. And at night, she and her husband laughed and joked, tried new recipes together and played the duets. Guess who lived happily ever after? Hey, that's the end of my book and guess what? Miss Amy's next with her craft. So now you know what a fractured fairy tale is. That Cinderella was a bit different than a traditional Cinderella story. Cinder Edna, I'm sorry, and it was pretty crazy. So I made two crafts that I'm gonna share with you. They're both very easy, and you can make them at home with very little equipment. The first one I did was, instead of a plain glass slipper, I made a very fancy, elegant slipper. So if you have your parent or if you're old enough to use scissors, you can cut out a very fancy shoe shape, or it can be a lower, a little more simple shape, but I wanted mine to be high heeled and elegant. And then I used some sequins and some little gems and jewels that we had around Patterson Library. If you don't have sequins at home, your mom or dad might have some buttons around that you could use, and maybe a little glitter. You could also use your crayons or markers and just decorate it and make the most beautiful Cinderella slipper that you can come up with. Remember, imagination is key this summer. The next thing I made, because the fairy godmother is one of my heroes, she changed Cinderella's life, so I made a magic wand. And it was very easy. I used a craft stick, and if you don't have a craft stick, you could use a popsicle stick even if you have to eat the popsicle first. Wash it off well so it's not sticky. And I just stapled my stick to a star that I had cut out. Now mine is foamy, but you could use cardboard, part of a cereal box, you can use um, paper, construction paper, whatever you have around the house. We had a great donation of some ribbon, so I picked out some colors I thought looked very royal and great for a fairy godmother. And I just cut different lengths of ribbons, any length I wanted, all different, and I glued them on the back. But I'm finished, but thought, eh, it's kind of plain. Now I could have used some of the sequins and gems I used for the shoes, but I have some pony beads here at the library too. So I thought, I'll do a little more on mine. Of course, my glue's not very full, there it is. Put a few dots of glue. You can do this at home. And if you have a hot glue gun, you can ask your grown-up to help you hot glue it. And every place I put a glue drop, I'm going to add a pony bead. One, two, three, four. I'm making mine all different colors. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-se
seven. And eight. Oh, that's much better. I'll hold it up just a little so you can see my beautiful fairy godmother wand. So if you make some of these things at home, you could save them and show them to us later when we can all be back together in person, or you could have your parents send us in a picture and we could put that. In fact, I was thinking while I was listening to Miss Jamie read that you could write your own version of Cinderella. Maybe you could get some paper and write it yourself or have your grown up help you. And you could write a crazy fractured fairy tale, unusual version of Cinderella that you use your imagination to, to make up yourself. You could bring it into the library, might even get you an extra little prize. So let us know if you get a chance to do that. You can also email it to us. Now, Miss Emily has one more book to read, and it's a crazy one. And then Miss Jamie's gonna show you a couple more crafts you can do at home. Thank you. Hi everybody. So we've heard a couple stories by now, but we have one more fractured fairy tale for you. And this one is called Bigfoot Cinderella. This one, Miss Amy was right. This one's really silly. Love it. Once upon a time in the old growth forest, a band of Bigfoots lived. An enormous snag towered above the other trees close to their camp. Inside its hollow halls of bark lived a dashing Bigfoot prince. He was tall and dark as a Douglas fir with feet like cedar stumps. He was as odiferous as his tree home was coniferous, and so horrendously hairy that the Bigfoot women near and far longed to marry him. Whenever they saw him lurching along, they blocked his path like deadfalls. They draped wildflowers around themselves. They batted their matted eyelashes to stun him into love. But the prince loved nature best. No pick flowers, he bellowed at them in voices as rough as bark. There's him yelling. In this place there lived a Bigfoot woman and her three daughters. Well, really only two were hers. The third was a stepchild. The daughters were puny things with dinky feet, almost furless as, as Bigfoots go, and as sour as little green berries. They spent their days bathing and picking their teeth with fish bones and sleeking their fur with pine cones. For fun, they threw rocks at spotted owls. The stepdaughter was just the opposite, nearly as woolly as a mammoth, golden as a banana slug, with feet like log canoes. She loved nature and would harm no creature. Her steps excuse me, her stepsisters despised her and they made her work. Although her name was Ella, they roared at her so much that everyone called her Rella. Rella, fix fire. Rella, catch fish. They forced her to comb her fur and stick wildflowers in it. If she tugged them out, they put back twice as many. In spite of this primping, Rella was sooty from the fire and stinking with fish. So they teased her like stinging mosquitoes. You beast, they laughed and held their no nose. You positive reek. You absolute freak. Then they bathed her a lot in the creek. Eek! One morning, Rella went to the river to get supper. She fished all day and tossed her catch onto the bank in a silvery pile. Suddenly, a grizzly bear appeared. He seemed hungry. Rella was bigger than the bear, so she could have shooed him away, but she was too kind. She let him have the fish. When she shambled home empty-handed, her stepsisters rubbed their bellies and bellowed, food, food, food. They forced her to fish all night. Now, every year the Bigfoot Prince gives a great fun fest. There were gifts and food and games like jump the fire, bear cave hide and seek, and hurl the hemlock. But log rolling was the favorite. This year, whichever woman rolled the prince off a log and into the river would become his wife. Rella's puny sisters hoped to dunk the prince. When me snag putrid furball prince, me roll, rule whole tree place, yelled the older one. 
Me pick all flower, the younger one grinned. Then they bell bellowed together, power, power, power. So they smoothed their pitiful fur, then spruced up with wildflowers and wearing fine bark clogs to grip the log, they clomped to the festival. Me go too, Rella hollered after them. She adored to sweat and win at games. Her sister hooted so hard they fell down. You stay, catch plenty fish. We catch fish. How Rella longed to go. Sadly, she stared at the river. She saw a fish jump. She made a wish on the fish. Me wish go fun fest. Me wish dunk prince. Heartfelt wish is true wish, growled a gruff voice. And so you go. Rella spun around. She was staring at a bear, the very one she had given fish. Who are you, she asked. Me, your berry godfather. Rella was overjoyed, then underjoyed. She mumbled. Me got no bark clogs to keep on log. Feet's too big. No be bug brain, snorted her godfather. He swiped the air with a paw and instantly an enormous pair of clogs appeared. Rella tried them on. They fit perfectly. Then the gri grizzly waved a paw over her and poof, the wildflowers she wore were dust. He patted and matted her fur and it tangled like the very forest floor. She boomed, thanks, and gave him a crunching hug. Be back sundown, he warned, or you be like sisters make you. No furry and smelly, but plenty flowery. Rella wasn't worried. She had lots of time. She skipped off, shaking the whole forest as she went. There she goes. At the fun fest, there were Bigfoot women from every clan. The games had begun. One by one, the women leaped onto a log where the prince crouched, ready. One by one, he dumped them into the water. Rella's stepsisters hated games, but to catch the prince, they'd do anything, even give logs a twirl. And they hoped a good drenching might even wash off his stench, but they never got the chance. When their turn came, the prince saw the wild flower chains and glowered. He tossed them in the water, snarling, no pick flowers. The day grew late. Everyone had tried to win. Everyone had failed. The Bigfoot Prince rumbled, rats, no bride. He was about to slouch home when thunk. Rella bounded onto the log, pounded her chest, and whooped, me dunk Prince. Grunting with all her might, she spun the log like a big twig. Then she gave it a twist and floop, the prince flopped into the river. There he goes. There was a stunned silence. The Bigfoots were slow-witted, so it took them a while to figure out, figure out what happened. When at last they began to chant, bride, 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 the sun was setting. Rilla saw that and rushed into the dense trees, shrieking, eek, just as her matted fur went sleek and wildflower flowers began to sprout. The prince lurched from the water, dripping and crushed. His dream woman, shaggy as the forest floor, smelly as a fish, and strong, was gone. Scratching his craggy head, he slumped down on a boulder. Drat, 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 he gnashed his mossy teeth. Where my stinking beauty go? Then he saw one big bark clog, hers. Now perhaps he could find his princess. The prince shuffled from snag to snag, cave to cave, lugging the lost clog. But though all the Bigfoot women tried it on, it was too large for anyone. The moment he reached Rella's cave, her stepmother and stepsisters pounced on the prince, wrestled the clog from him, and jumped into it eagerly. Their feet were so small, they all fit in at once. Then Rella bounded up yelling, me try, me try, me, me, me. She did, and her foot fit the clog like a seed in a pod. When she pulled out its mate, the Bigfoot Prince knew he'd found his bride. He thumped his chest and roared with joy. The stepsisters roared too. In tantrums, they yanked up some wildflowers and saplings. Their mother kicked the prince black and blue. It's not very nice. Soon there was a rowdy wedding in the old growth forest. Everyone was invited. 
even Rella's stepmother and stepsisters could come if they followed these three rules carefully. No pick flower, no pull tree, no kick royal family. The end. So that was another fractured, that was another fractured story tale. And this one was an interesting take, Bigfoot Cinderella. So I really liked this one. And now we have one more activity for you. We're gonna go over to Miss Jamie and she'll show you some crafts. Thanks guys. Welcome back. So today I'm going to show you two crafts. I made a Cinderella coach and I made two little mice. So we'll start with the Cinderella coach and I just started with a paper plate and you could paint this, you could color it orange, you could do it, keep it white, you could do whatever you wanted to do and you would need a construction paper and you just cut out shapes for the window and the roof and the wheels. And then you put whatever decorations you want on your coach. I happen to put little colored dots that I got out of the craft area. But you could do the pony beads. You could do glitter. You could do anything you really wanted to do to decorate your coach. Now for the mice. So these are the mice that I made. And what I did was I cut the center out of this um, paper plate. So I made it a little bit smaller. And then I cut like a half a moon shape out of here. And I added a button for the eye and a little puffy nose and a little pipe cleaner straw. And then I found two scrap papers that we had here at the library and I cut little circles to make the little ears. Now, if you want to do this, you could do any, you could color his little eye in, color his little nose, and I just used a glue stick to attach everything. So that's all I got for today, guys. Keep on reading. Keep on reading. Thank you.